In this video, I'm going to show you how to import and prepare the EPS file that I uh, purchased from my vinyl designer and prepare it for cutting. So in Click and Cut Studio, and this also applies to ACS Studio, Design Master, Click and Cut Studio GE, and all versions of the Catalink program, go to File, Import, and then locate the folder where you have the file. Now in this case, if you watch the prior videos, I um, placed the file in, under my documents under EPS. Um, and then it's inside this folder called Archive, under a subfolder Files, under a subfolder to Alphabet EPS. And notice each time I'm clicking on the folder, not on the zip. Be very careful about the zip. Sometimes it gets confusing because it looks a bit like a folder. So if it's got the zip, you don't want that. You want the actual extracted folder. And then under here, I'm going to come down and find the file. Now, I love the fact they have a separate MC because my last name is Macaulay, so I'm going to select that and then click on Import. And then when you import a file into Click and Cut Studio, you see this little L shape, this little right angle cursor. That just means you can go anywhere on the screen and left click, and that's where the top um, upper left hand corner of the file will be, um, will be uh, planted. This little window is going to open first. It has these options. Look for the Use PDF Import File Recommended. Now, in older versions of the software, this may be the third item in the list or the second. I'm not really sure. Um, in newer versions, it's at the, the top. But either way, you want to use this one, the PDF Import Filter, not the EPS. Even though it's an EPS uh, choice there, use the PDF. And then click on OK. And then this window will pop up, and it'll say, you know, it'll give you some choices. The only one I would recommend, I don't know if it's necessary for this one, but you might always want to make sure import text is graphics, because that way you don't have to worry about having uh, the font installed. Um, always check, in this case, since it's an EPS, it's always going to be one page. If you're importing a PDF, you might have multiple pages, and you only want to import one page at a time. But just verify that should say one page. If for any reason it ever says more than one page, then click on this link single and then pick which page you want to open and you may need to open page one and then go back in and open page two and whatever all right with PDF it's easy because you can open those up separately and know which page you want to use but with EPS again you should only have one page but if you see more than one open them up one at a time and then click on OK and now then my file comes in and I can see uh, the exact file the EPS file to verify, you know, something really is a, uh, you know, a vector, you can turn off the fill so it may look like this. That just verifies if you lose all the color of the fill, that means, yes, it's a, it's a vector file that's ready to cut. And then at this point, um, it's just ready to size. And, of course, in Click and Cut Studio, right up here in the very center between these two sets of numbers, this shows you the size, the overall size of the file. And that would be the width from this side, this bounding box, over to this bounding box. And that would be the width here, the seven inches, and then the top up here from top to bottom, it'd be five or almost six inches. And you can drag a corner to resize it, okay? Or if you know you need it to be a certain size, let's say you know it needs to be six inches wide, before you resize it, make sure this is indented. This is the proportional scaling. If this is not indented, if it's like this, then you could change one size and it wouldn't change the other dimension and that can you know lead to the image being distorted and certainly in something like this you probably are going to want to resize it proportionally so i indent this make sure it's locked and that can come in and say okay i want that to be just six inches wide and then hit the enter key and then it will resize both proportionally and i know that this is exactly six inches wide and so for this point and then also you know if you didn't want to um to cut all of this then what you can do is modify the image, um, you know, a little bit. You can, like, remove this frame. Um, if you ever have one where you can't remove each part, now each one of these parts is removing, sometimes you might need to go to a range, break path first, then click away so nothing is selected. Then you can come in and select each of the individual parts that you want to cut. So let's say I wanted to just cut this part. Then again, I would have this much, and I could come in and resize it and get it ready for cutting. Another thing before you cut, I've brought those outside frames and I've brought them back, you know, and, and positioned them with that interior part. One thing you might want to do is select your entire image before cutting and do an arrange make path. And now then I can't separate any of the individual little parts. It's all one path. The importance of doing that is so that all of the interior pieces 
will cut before the exterior pieces. It basically will work its way from the inside out. And that's very important when you're cutting any from any materials on one of these uh, die cutting machines because you have more stability if you do it in that direction from the inside out rather than cutting this outside frame and then cutting this frame and then and working your way towards the center. It's always better to start with the smaller and work your way out. So I just wanted to mention that also. Again, select it and go to arrange, make path. Okay, the last step is if you need to save this, once you have this file and you've made some changes and let's say you want to save, you know, whatever changes you've made, then go to File, Save As, and then locate whatever folder. Again, always make sure you know where you're saving a file. I have a special folder set up just called K&K &K, and that's where I put all of my K&K &K files. And right here I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to call it MVD for My Vinyl Designer and I'm going to call it the MC Letter. And again, you can call it anything you want to. Just give it the name that you want that will help you remember it, and then click on Save. And now then I have that file saved uh, just as I have left it right here. And then, of course, if I make any other changes, then I can save again. And from this point, I'm now ready to uh, cut the file. Um, there's plenty of instructions on how to cut a file and click and cut. I'm sure I don't need to, to cover that. But at this point, I'm ready to send it to the cutter, and I'm eager to see what it looks like, and I'm going to put it on my laptop cover.